Head to Head. Well, joining us this morning, I'm delighted to say, are Adam Stott, entrepreneur and business coach, and Jonathan List, journalist and political commentator, both resplendent in marvellous festive <laughs> jumpers. Good morning. Good morning. How are you both? Very, very, very well. well thank now you. you're here, you see. Now I'm here. Now, now you're here. What were you going to say, by the way, earlier? I was saying that your Christmas trees have snow on them. It was nothing to very interesting, oh. to be honest. I don't know, this is about the most interesting thing I've heard this morning. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Right, thank you very much indeed. Right, let's let's start, shall we, and on that segue. Um, because so many people are so angry about what is going on, uh, and I'm just really interested in your take on, on what is going on in terms of immigration. Uh, this is an article in The Guardian saying, Rishi Sunak aims to block UK human rights laws in an effort to revive the government's faltering plans to send people seeking asylum to Rwanda. Um, so, so essentially what they're doing uh, is complicated, but essentially the idea behind this Safety of Rwanda bill, which is only 12 pages long, by the way, so it's a very short <laughs> bill indeed. It says Rwanda is a safe country. They've inserted these notwithstanding clauses, which means it supersedes all other legislation and international law. Law. It disapplies the Human Rights Act of 1998. It also means that the UK government can choose to ignore pyjama injunctions. And by the way, I will just explain that because someone said, what is a pyjama injunction? That's when a judge in uh, Europe jumped out of bed in pyjamas to block the Rwanda flights. Uh, so they can ignore those pyjama injunctions. They can ignore the ECHR, but they don't leave the ECHR. So we've spoken about a, um, a semi-skim version and a full-fat version of this. He's opted for the semi-skim version. His issue is that some of his party are ameliorated by that and others are not. So there's serious trouble here. Rishi Sunak fighting for his political life, I think. Well, I think it is really clear. It's a, a tough situation for uh, Rishi Sunak, but I feel like he is trying to do his best, and he's actually doing something. He's being active and putting something in place. Obviously, he's got to get the support, but on the basis that he's taking action, you know, it was one of his pledges to stop the boats. He's pushing on with that. There needs to be a deterrent, and, and that deterrent being, you know, Rwanda. But actually, if you know, if you if you really research Rwanda, it's not actually that bad a place, right? It's one of the safest countries in Africa. It's one of the cleanest countries in Africa, and it's quite progressive actually. So it's not like the worst place in the world. Well, I mean, we spent two hundred ninety million pounds. We keep being told it's a safe country. I haven't been to Rwanda, but two hundred ninety million pounds. Uh, we sent no one uh, apart from three home secretaries. So uh, <laughs> so they've had a lovely time. Look, I mean, either this, this fails in its own terms. I mean, when you say about he's doing something, well, you know, anyone doing anything is doing something. Something must be done. This is something. That's not how you conduct government. Uh, Rishi Sunak has in already seen... Yes, but is. Sunak... But, 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 well, no, I mean, but there are... there are. If you, if you actually care about stopping the boats, and we've spoken about this hundreds of times, there are many ways that you can actually do that. You can stop the smuggling gangs by allowing safe and legal routes to come here so they're regulated by the government rather than by smuggling gangs. Now, you can allow people to um, get on a, a legitimate vessel in order to claim asylum here. You can allow people to claim asylum in France, for example, and then if they, they claim successful, then they can come here legally and safely. But the government's not interested in doing that because it wouldn't play well with the right-wing media and the well, So, so they are sustaining, they're, they're sustaining the model. And the, the point is, the fundamental point, which we have to keep making over and over again, is that, first of all, Sunak has lost this case, so he's doubling down, whereas someone with a little bit more dignity and political now say, OK, you know what? Fair, fair enough. The Supreme Court's ruled against this. Let's try something else. Let's go to Plan B, rather than doubling down, because that is not playing well, because it makes him look weak and stupid and ineffectual, particularly when there's no guarantee this will even work. But even on its own metric, even if you would say, yes, OK, fine, we've got flights to Rwanda, some luckless individuals are going to be taken to Kigali. Rwanda can accept maximum a few hundred people a year. That is a drop but, in but, the but, whole point, compared the whole to whole point people. is it's a deterrent. You have to have a deterrent in place, and it's actually really, really unfair that you say nothing else is being done, essentially, because they are doing lots. It's a multifaceted approach to stopping the boats. It's not just a one-tier thing. They need a deterrent in place. This is what's been put in place to have a deterrent, and, you know, it hasn't been done yet, so it hasn't. there's no evidence as to whether it is going to work or it's not going to work, but something needs to be done. And then secondly, on top of that, they are doing things to stop criminal gangs. They are doing things to work with the border police. 
place. So all of the things that you just suggested and said they're not doing, they actually are doing. So, so we spent £500 million bolstering the French, for example, mm. to improve border controls. In fact, Johnny Mercer yesterday was saying, well, last year, what was it, 44,000 came in. This year is down to 29,000. So they're reducing. The rest of Europe are increasing. Yeah, 80% up the rest well, of Europe. Well, although, having said that, there are also stories out this week to show that actually what's happening now is more of these migrants, especially the Albanians, are moving on to lorries again not on to well, Of course we have a returns agreement with Albania. Yeah. We do but they're coming in illegally so then we won't find no. them um, and they're coming in on the back of boats so we may not be reducing it and also the weather has been shocking this year. I don't think Rishi has reduced the boats. Well so, so, so let's go back to you if I can Adam. Just, uh, just in terms of that the, this full fat version where we actually say right we're taking back control of our the borders and we're leaving the ECHR um, and this semi skin version my, my big concern if you stand in the middle of the road you get run over. <laughs> well I feel that he had the pledge to stop the boats. He's doing everything within his power to do that without... Um, and he's, he's getting criticised at every turn. He's getting criticised for everything he does. He's trying to navigate difficult policy and put that in place, but he is taking action. And I think at the end of the day, the one thing that I support is if someone says they're going to stand by policy and put a policy in place, he's doing everything he can. What, was to it get a mistake thing. to stick that on the lectern, stop the boats? It's one of his... I think it was a great. strong promise, but the whole point is you've got to have strong promises and you've got to see things through. There's, there's a lot of people that are not happy with the illegal immigration well, situation. I, I, I totally agree. It's politically but stupid because he can't do it. And so even if you are, even if you take the morality out of it, um, if you are making that your overriding pledge, but this is my whole problem with the, the Labour, election, right? Is you say, well, it's politically stupid because he can't do it. Oh, well, let's just do something that's easy. Let's just do something that gets everyone on board. Why not have strong promises and well, try and see strong promises well, through? Because that you actually see is good what's leadership. What's the definition right? of madness? Is to see is to do the same thing over and over again, even when it's been proven to fail. No, I, but, but I'm not in charge of I, Labour immigration policy. It hasn't policy. been proven to fail because no one's been there. Well, so, people, so Adams... Rwanda has been tried before. Look, we have to remember this is we're not sort of complete pioneers here. Israel, which is not exactly a country um, that I would you know sort of uh, use as an example for compassionate uh, migration policy, um, but that had um, a Rwanda policy, I think, and it failed after years and sort of migrants were escaping. They scrapped the plan. But Australia had one and it didn't yeah. fail. Well, yeah. well, well, that's a, a quite a subjective point, isn't it, Renee? Given that. You know, in the sort of a Nauru, you know, sort of the, the the tales of human rights abuses have been shocking. You have tales of sort of um, uh, migrants um, dying in suspicious circumstances. You know, Australian human rights organisations um, can provide you with a litany uh, of cases about how that migration migration policy is manifestly cruel and absolutely not the. the but have you seen follow. that Biden is now considering a third country solution to their migration problem? This is something that countries well, he's are obviously under a lot of pressure, and he's trying to win back votes from Trump. Look, I'm not. Look, I don't think that. Just because someone that we know we are that might be sort of vaguely politically aligned with us in some ways are trying to, it doesn't make it a good thing. We have to base things on on our principles. But 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 let's look at Italy, for example, that are processing people offshore <coughs> uh, offshore of Albania as well. So many European countries actually resorting to the same tactics. There is no doubt in my mind, migration, immigration is the number one issue coming up to this election. Would you agree? No, absolutely not. <laughs> people are not. What is the number people, one? The economy at the NHS. But that's caused by too many people coming no, into this not, country. David. It absolutely no, is. Let, well, what about this? Robert Jenrick, I, I, I don't normally agree with him, but on the front page of the Daily Telegraph, Jenrick, too many migrants to integrate. David, are you he, really saying that Are you really saying that the cost of living crisis and the collapsing NHS is a product of too many migrants yes. coming to this country and not the product of uh, a decade of underinvestment? No, we haven't. We've spent more money on the NHS. Ask and Dr. the lack Renner. of resources. That is not absolute nonsense. We've spent more money. We spend 11.3% of GDP on the NHS. The issue is we can't service the mass immigration into this country. The, as we've said many times, the NHS is staffed by migrants. That we is true. To migration. Well, that's the problem. Yeah. Well, that's that, 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 that yeah. you could you could argue whether that is um, well, legal something. I think right. why I don't I <laughs> don't illegal. say uh, well well actually uh, someone who comes here illegally and is then granted the right to stay here is then given the right to become a productive member of society. No one, very few people are coming here in order to be illegal migrants. No one wants to be an illegal migrant. People have who have no choice, and we have to remember but the they vast majority choice, of people. John, the vast majority of people the coming here. To come the vast in the first majority. Place, illegal, I love having a three three No, 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 it's not. The vast majority of people who come here um, who claim asylum are actually granted asylum because the UK because decides... Because our system is yeah, too system was, lenient. Well, yeah, then yeah. you can just... Well, you can 
ch you can move look, the goalposts if you want to. And actually, even if you open up your safe routes, Jonathan, what have you considered? The people that actually get turned away and deported back to, let's say, France, for argument's sake, they're just going to jump on a boat and come illegally. So safe routes don't solve the problem either. Well, I mean, obviously, the, when you have uh, these, uh, these problems... Something needs to be done at the end of the day. Obviously, there will be people. And they're doing something. And essentially, what's the alternative? And, and this is well, the problem. Well, just the alternative. Well, yes. well, well the, alternative the alternative is Labour of... will not put anything in place to actually... That's so, so what, what is Labour's yeah. policy? Because Someone. I'm really confused mm. about this. They're against Rwanda, obviously. We know that. What is Labour's policy in terms of net migration? When we look at those figures, I said net migration 745,000 last year. That's a lot of people coming into this country, and that's what people are crossing. Now it's happened under Conservatives. Yes. So what's Labour yeah. going to do? Well, look, I look. I if I was if I was in charge of Labour's immigration policy, I guarantee you it would look a bit different. What would it look like? Well, it would look like. Um, having well, first of all, well, yeah, obviously, I, in, in the words of the old joke, what would you do? I wouldn't start from here. Yes. You know, I'd, obviously, we'd be in the European Union. We'd have free movement to people, etc., etc. We don't have that. So, um, I would obviously, I've always been a, a pro migration. I think migration is an unqualified good. I think that the only thing um, that should uh, prevent, if it's managed, the only thing that uh, is. A kind of a qualification to migration is capacity. That's the only thing. Mm. Um, that's if, if if you literally don't have the capacity to have the number if, uh, for reasons of geography or we services. Don't. That is, I, I disagree, but that's the, that is, the, 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 that is the metric that I would put so, in place. So can I just move on to you, Adam, because yeah. just in terms of this, the Conservative MP is under enormous pressure to back Rishi Sunak. I think this is his big moment. It's a yeah. massive gamble in terms of where he is when this safety of Rwanda bill comes for it, back for its second reading. Just in terms of that, we've got these four warring factions in the Conservative Party, the One Nation, the ERG and so on. The, the, do you think that actually the Conservative Party is about to pull itself apart or can it unite? Are they about to fracture? Is the Conservative well, Party the lessons, doomed to oblivion? Well, I think the lessons, they've got to learn the lessons of the past. And, you know, you talk about why are they behind essentially or why are they uh, struggling? And that is because nobody really tolerates that infighting. You want a cohesive leadership, a cohesive team that's moving forward. They've got a decision to make now. And, you know, you won't always agree with everything that's being done at the top, but if you agree that we have the best interests of the country in that policy overall, then really I, I feel people should come together and should back it. And, and it's interesting yeah. in terms of even the differing legal advice. So you've got, uh, for example, Lord Sumption, who says that actually this new plan for Rwanda is legally watertight. At the same time, you've got other people who are saying it, it isn't. So you've got the Solicitor General, Lord Garnier, saying it's political nonsense and legal nonsense. He said there's no evidence for this working. It's like having a bill saying dogs are cats. And the fact that they are already arguing about it yeah, means it will end up in the courts. And that's the point, yeah. isn't it? And, and just in terms of that, I just wonder what your thoughts are in terms of, and I, I, you know, obviously I have to be slightly careful what I say. There, there is a big article this morning in the Telegraph about Reform UK <laughs> and the rise of Reform UK, that's why I'm saying. Mm. But uh, polling at 11% could well deprive the Conservatives of, of seats. It could mean a Labour majority. And, th and this is what people are saying to me, is that, at least someone is talking about immigration and taking it seriously. They don't believe that the Conservative Party is taking this seriously. This, this is what I think is really difficult, is that no matter what you do, yeah, at the moment it gets argued pretty much from all sides. I feel strongly that there is a policy to stop the boats, there's been action taken around stopping the boats, and I believe that you should back that action being taken. Something has been proposed, it's been pushed hard, it's been put in place quickly. So my, my opinion is people should get behind that. But also right? in terms of legal migration, they yeah. admitted they got this wrong. So they, they've finally realised the salary threshold was far too yeah, low. Yeah, but they've made changes to They the have, legal. but, but yeah. isn't that because there's a general election coming? Yeah. Well, yeah, but... Even if it is because there's a general election coming, what they're trying to... With legal migration, which is really important, bringing productive members of society into the country is a good thing, right? It's not necessarily a bad thing. Well, you would right? argue that it's good for growth, but we haven't seen any growth for a decade. Well, that's why they may change you, right? But there are lots of there are lots of people, productive people by that met metric, who are not going to be able to come in. And I think that we do also have to talk about the, the cruelest gesture of gesture politics that James Cleverly announced this week, where he said, you know, with one stroke of the pen, um, that tens of thousands, potentially, of British people who uh, were unpatriotic enough 
to fall in love with foreign nationals now face being separated from their families and their children being separated from one of their parents. Now, this is just the most obscene um, kind of uh, politics that I can think of, where you are basically creating two categories of citizens. The citizens who are wealthy enough to marry whoever they like and have a family life, which is a human right that we should all recognise, and those who simply aren't well paid enough to be able to live with their families. Imagine if every country did this. If, every, if, I, mar if I married someone from this country and I wasn't rich enough to live with them here and, um, I wasn't, and they weren't rich enough for me to live with them there. Well, you it's simply wouldn't be able to... to potentially no, 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 that's right? an outrageous thing to say. It's not yeah. about some I people... I don't think it is. Versus, it's not. It's yeah. not. Yeah. 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 percentile of people who now don't qualify is completely out of age. Why should Rishi Sunak have the right for, to live with his wife well, look, and I wouldn't have the right to live to with put, mine? You've got to put policy in place that there is no one's going to agree blanket with policy. And if you do have policy that blanket everyone agrees with, that's not going to serve anybody. So you have to make decisions and you have to put things in place with the best interests of the country at heart. And that is the first, how first is it priority. It's because children from their parents? It's not it's because that's we are looking at how yeah I mean what, what you're doing is you're making that's 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 you're creating a scenario. I have and, to go to a break. Yeah. Renee just finish that point. I was just gonna say why why would should taxpayers have to pay for people yeah, to fall not, in love with people? Can't claim benefits anyway. You could simply have a clause saying you cannot have access to, to recourse okay. to public funds. Fine. It's completely cruel. It's inhuman, Fine. Renee. Let's stop at that moment. It's time uh, for a short break. They'll be back after this break. Adam Stock, Jonathan Liss joining us for Head to Head this morning. This is Talk TV. I haven't stopped talking uh, since you left us. Adam Stott, Jonathan Liss joining uh, Dr Rennie and myself. Let's go back to this legal migration because I just want to be really clear what Cleverly announced. Health and care visas, uh, those people coming in on a health and care visa cannot bring family dependents. The annual migration health surcharge rises from £624 to £1,035. That will bring in another £1.3 billion to the NHS. The skilled worker visa minimum goes from 27,000 up to 38,000. They relook at the shortage occupation list. And the bit we're talking about, this family visas, the minimum threshold for a family visa will be raised. It was at 18,600, which it was set in 2012. It will go up to 38,700. The thinking behind that is because that is the average wage. No, it's, not. it's above the average wage. 33,000 is the... 75% 33,000. But, but aren't they right? Because the fact no. is that... But they are right. Because no. the fact is what you need to do is to ensure that you can financially support your family. That's aren't they? my business. That's my business. If it's I our support. business if we're no, paying. No, else. it's not, David. If you are allow people to live here with the spouse, the person that they love and have chosen to live with, which is a family, which is a human right, is literally human right, the right to family life. Okay. Yep. Why should that right only be available to rich people? You could easily have a clause to say, you know, as we do in many cases, that if you bring someone, they are not entitled to have recourse to public funds. They that? get a job, so, I get so a job, whatever. Just in terms of that, so it was stuck. 18,600, what and would before you have put it up that, to? I'd have put it at zero, just as it was before 2012. But Jonathan, before 2012, anyone could bring it Jonathan, their spouse here. whether or not they're allowed access to resources, they will get them. Because if somebody comes over, cannot be supported, turns up at the NHS, turns up at, at child services, they will be supported. Because well, we're not going to turn people you away. Have, obviously, you know, if you, we, have, we have public services, the whole idea is that, you know, we pay into the system, we, pay, we get out of it. Obviously, no people... £18,000 to raise a family, Jonathan. Yeah. People and live the on amount a lot. Paying, on that, the amount that you're paying into the system at that rate is, is so low. It doesn't cover what nothing. you're taking out of the system. And, and especially that, that, and, that's and look, the issue. that is the sentiment on the street. Why am I paying all this money for people bringing over dependents into this country? That's I'm telling you, that's I'm what I'm not even talking saying. about dependents. I'm talking about spouses. It's not, you know, it, there might be a minority cases where so you marry you're someone and they already have children. I want to bring someone in and somebody else should pay for it. No, I'm not that's... saying that. Why are you, why do you but frame you it? That, 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 that is what you're, that's time. not frames. Everyone, that's everyone in, in every single way. So, like, younger people if you, are going to be paying more into health and they're taking 
taking your work hard to up your salary and become more productive well, and train harder. Right, Norman and, and, no, but it's true, isn't it? Norman, it's like, completely oh, if you, if you nurses, know, that nurses. Scene? I'm sorry, like it's just telling it, telling it. Like, what, what is this like? What is this deranged Thatcherism we're talking about? You know, you're you sort of like this this idea that you just work harder and magically well, get more money. Nurses, 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 really nurses <laughs> earn. Uh, nurses, you know, often work working the bone. You know, are you going to just tell them to work harder and magically get more money? People who you know sort of bin collectors what, that we need. Hang on a minute. To, you know, are we going to tell them to work? What about this nurse? Where, where are you going with that? People, there are, there are, I'm saying it, there are people who are working as all the hours God sends and they're not making £38,000. Telling people but to they're work making more harder. Than 18, Jonathan. Mm. It doesn't matter, Renee. This is a fundamental principle. Why should there be two classes of citizens in this country? Why do Rishi Sunak's children have more of a right to live with their foreign parent than I would have, or my children, if I had any, would have the right to live with theirs? That is not fair. It's a so, question so of we just, So basically, what you're saying is you can bring anyone you like, any of your family into well, this I'm not country. Getting married but to a different person. No, no, we're the talking about principles. dependence. They, they have yeah. said, in terms of dependency, that's spouses. No, I'm talking about dependence, health and social care visas. Should they bring their dependents? These are children. It depends so on who. It, well, it depends they on who bring... you're talking about dependence. I mean, are you talking about an entire extended family? Yes. No, fair enough. But if you're talking about, you know, if you marry someone and in minority cases they will have children, you, I should they be separate from children? I think what's being missed is why it's in place because what you, it is quite emotive what you're talking about and you're sort of zoning in on one area but the overall principle is to um, help the country to become a better economic country to be in and the way that they're doing that of course we have many many people coming into the country it's out of out of control to a degree as the bigger numbers of migration so what they're saying is we, we're quite happy to have productive skilled people coming into the country that are going to add value and pay tax and in that case then the services will be covered Let what we don't want to do is bring people into the country that are going to take more away than they're going to bring and that's the principle of the policy. The policy has not been put in place to be cruel. The policy has been put in cruel. place from an cruel. economic let, let's perspective. Let, let me cruel. ask you, Adam. Yeah. Uh, Lord Frost says that actually uh, the Conservative Party should consider having another Prime Minister. So we've had four in five years. Should we have a, have a fifth? Absolutely not. Why? Because you, he's been in place for a year. He said he's going to do five things. He has pretty much halved the inflation, right? The economy. Well, he hasn't. It, well, it's fallen. Yeah, it's well, like he, he didn't take any responsibility yeah. for increasing inflation. Right. Yeah. Why is he taking okay. responsibility for reducing it? Well, because he said this is the plan. We're going to reduce it. Right. He, he the it economy is growing. He's doing everything he can to stop the boats. The waiting list, the length of waiting list is coming down. So the five things he says he's going to do, he's going to do. If you just can keep replacing, can he turn it around? I think I think I think there's a big big moment coming, and this this moment obviously is is what's going through now with this Rwanda bill. But I believe you know look at the end of the day he's not popular, and the reason he's not popular is because he's making hard decisions. It's because he's no good. Yeah, well you say that, well, yeah, but that's what everyone would have said in 1981 on about Margaret Thatcher. Well, Come 1983, Margaret she was hang on, yeah. hang on. Yeah, sorry, carry on, Adam. Well, in 1981. She was hated, and everybody thought she was no good. And he, because she said, "I'm going to do this," and she followed through. And that's what a leader does. A leader says, "I'm going to do this, and I'm going to follow it through." And if I get stick and people have a go at me, that's fine. But I'm not going to be oh, taken no, to off. Be fair. You know what the moral of the story is? Maybe she's getting a new Argentine well, president. To okay, have look, a little, at uh, the the look at the alternative. Look at the alternative. Keir Starmer. Everything he said he's going to do, he then backtracks on. That is the bottom line. Not he's not some. Yeah, but. I know, but that's the alternative, right? That yes, is literally that is your alternative. And it's, and it's a really good it's a really good point, actually. In terms of setting out your stall, it's so negative. What we want to see, I think, is is uh, sound leadership. principle, yeah. clear leadership, all that kind of thing. Very quickly, because I have to stop. Uh, Boris Johnson has been told to stop wearing a Grimsby Town Football Club hat by hundreds of <laughs> residents, uh, saying that actually he's bringing the area into disrepute. <laughs> um, they are very unhappy that uh, they they are very unhappy he's worn this hat. It, there's a band. Boris Johnson from wearing Grimsby Town Football Club hat because it's shaming the community. Should politicians stop wearing um, labels that affiliate them with uh, political team or football teams or, or, or any other affiliation? Well, I, I think if he was really popular, they probably wouldn't have a problem with it. But, <laughs> you know, I think that at the moment, um, mind you, it's a bit of a promotion for Grimsby Town. You know, they're in the news. But, yeah, probably they should... Uh, he probably should take the hat off, right? Jonathan? <laughs> The less I hear about that man, the better. <laughs> <laughs> and I want to hear that man's name spoken again. <laughs>
And on that note, we'll conclude. Thank you very much to the two of you. Adam Stott, entrepreneur, business coach, Jonathan Liss, journalist and political commentator. That was today's Head to Head. Head to Head. Well, that was a fiery one, really. Jonathan has set my board on fire. <laughs> has he? <laughs> Uh, as Elf on the Shelf. Go on then, tell us a couple. Oh, I just can't really. There's okay. just too many and they're too rude. Anyone no. who doesn't despise me? No one likes you, Jonathan. <laughs> <laughs> well, some, well, some people just can't handle the truth in the words of Jack Nelson. Right, OK. This, but... <laughs> this one's quite, quite polite. Mr Liss would be creating poverty with his views. Well, That's quite polite. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> right, let's, let, let's, let's move on. Ti time to take some calls now. Uh, thank you, chaps. Uh, Christopher is in Kent. Good morning to you. 